Jeff Green is the driver involved. You heard the conversation. It was, uh, about 50% uh, better. We need to do it a little bit more. So I wonder if Dick Trickle got his lap down. Ooh, look at the heavy contact. Boy, oh, Jeff Green's mess. Got... First Union wants First Union wants to get some TV, but not this way. So did Trickle get his lap back? Guess not. He did not nope. get his lap back. He was battling flamer as he tried to start that car. <laughs> Trying to start the car, but all yeah. the water we see in the radiator is running across the racetrack. Yeah, Jeff, you don't need to crank that thing. You, you aren't going anywhere with it. Second caution of the evening coming out as we near the halfway. Back. And Johnny Benson lost about four or five spots. And Jeff Green's looking for somebody. Yeah. He's a little angry with somebody. I think you're right. I'm just glad to see he's okay because that car was really taking a beating there. Wow. Is he just trying to get across the racetrack, or is he looking for somebody? I, I look like he, Benny. I thought he was looking yeah. for somebody to come around that he wanted to shake a finger at. But maybe he's just waiting for the traffic to go by so he can go down across the racetrack. Yeah. Oh, 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 there it is. You're right. Was that Musgrave? Yep. Looked like a yellow and blue car. Yep. So Jeff Green is okay, but unhappy with Ted Musgrave as he scampers across the track to a safer position. Didn't have far to run to his pit. Well, let's take a look at this thing and we'll confirm whether or not it was Ted Musgrave. Yes. Yes. That's <laughs> he was pointing at. Look at the top of your frame now. We'll see if we can catch what happened. Uh, it's already happened. And. Let's see, Musgrave is. Yeah. Uh, First car in that pack that came off of turn four. A lot of cleanup necessary because, as we indicated, the radiator dumped out all of its water onto the racetrack, and so we will be under caution here for a few minutes. There's almost 100,000 people who have gathered here at Richmond International Raceway tonight. John Curtin. Jeff Green is uh, walking by, obviously upset, uh, does not want to stop to talk to us now. I have a feeling he is headed down pit road to a certain pit stall to talk to a certain crew. Mm -hmm. We would guess so. so. <laughs> Jerry? Well, I came to the first union uh, pit stall, and that crew is already headed down pit road. As now a NASCAR official is trying to get Jeff Green to head back to the garage, and Jeff says, no, I, I need to have a little discussion. Now, what Jeff Green told his first union crew was that the 16 car turned him out in the corner, so he is going to go try to make his point. His crew members are already on their way to that stall to make their point. This could get very interesting. I think now finally the NASCAR official has made his point and turned him around. Thankfully, we're headed him back to the garage area. Yep, we'll keep an eye on that situation, but it looks like Jeff Green has uh, decided to go back and cool off for a little while before possibly talking with the Musgrave team. Bob? Yep. Tomorrow night at 11 o'clock. Oh, my gosh. A sit down with Michael. Yes. In front. Guy on your right. Brakes. This guy? Yeah. 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 That's got to be a brake engineer. In Mark Martin's pit.
of Richmond International Raceway as we welcome you back to the Pontiac Excitement 400 under caution for the second time. Well, David Jet Green was discouraged from going down there. Felix Abadis, the owner of the 46 car, is having a rather heated discussion with the Musgrave team. Now, John Kernan will talk to Jeff. Jeff getting a cool drink, trying to cool down a little bit. Jeff, uh, you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Uh, this makes me mad. You know, we had a good car to start the race, and we got a little loose, and we was getting it better. Got a lap down there, and we had a long way to go. And a guy driving a 16, he spun me up before, and I don't know whether he's got a problem with me or not, but I don't want to tear anybody's race car up over it. needs to come see me, not tear the guy's race car up. Felix gave me opportunity to run, and doing a thought we was doing a decent job you know we wasn't going to have the best finish what we thought we were going to have but had a long time to work on it you know and um, got to see the checker flag before we can finish well so i just you know i don't i don't try to rub on anybody or wreck anybody and he's done it to me twice now so i'm gonna have to have a talk with him all right that's jeff green good luck next week jeff there is felix <laughs> the owner of the sabco racing team well, we're eight laps away from the halfway point here in Richmond. The lead is held by Terry Labonte with Mark Martin running inside. Back to racing for three laps at the brick. Oh, and a crash up in the straightaway, and this may end things. Several cars involved in an incident before crossing the start-finish line. And but the problem is, Bob, there's a car sitting there, and they've got to... Now Nemechek is moving. I thought they were going to have to drive through a car sitting on the racetrack because they're racing back to the line. The first one back wins. The caution flag is out, but remember, they race back to the caution in NASCAR Winston Cup competition. And so Jeff Gordon is going to have to make sure that he keeps Mark Martin and Bobby Labonte behind him. Here they come off of corner number four. And Ricky Rudd's car is very badly damaged as the caution is out and Jeff Gordon will cross the line first to complete lap 158. Two to go and that could have been it. Well, the next time, now the pace car is going to pick them up and there's, there's no way in the world they can clean up these cars in two laps that I can see. The, the pace car will pick them up down in the corner is sensing a win by Jeff Gordon, the pace car. Oh, we have a car into the wall up ahead of uh, Jeff Gordon, the leader, under caution. I think that might be Robert Presley. Here's a damaged car of Chad Little here at the bottom of your screen. So all kinds of activity here in the closing laps of this race. That is Robert Presley, who's up against the wall in quarter number two. We will not go back to green because we have cars literally all over the racetrack. Here's what happened as the green was coming out. And we see that someone just ran right in the back of, we saw the back of Jeff Green's car jump up in the air. He was hit by Joe Nemechek, but there could have been contact before that. In any case, it littered the straightaway with wrecked race cars. With it looks like Ricky Rudd coming out on the short end of everything. In some parts of the country, Jeff Gordon is not a particularly liked driver. He is booed and jeered at several racetracks, but not here in Indiana. He has a tremendous fan following still. They love him. And it looks like he's going to become the second going to be the driver who wins a second Brickyard 400. The white flag is out. One more lap to go. We will not go back to green. And Jeff Gordon will be the winner of the 1998 Brickyard 400. I think we're going to look at this crash up here from Ricky Rudd and see what happened. We see what's going to cause all the damage to Rudd's car. Oh, I see it's Robert Press's car. He would be going forwards and he's trying his best. 46 car of Jeff Green. Looks like he's got some damage there on the right side. And the caution is out, so apparently there's some debris on the racetrack. Jeff Green in the pit early. Jimmy Mayfield as well, car trying to get on the inside of Schrader. 
Now, once that caution comes out, now they can race back to the flag, but of course, no one is down the lap now. So they're told in the driver's meeting, hey, this is a, a gentleman's call. Just uh, stay in line. We'll see what happens here with Green. You see him in the oh, middle yeah. of the screen there, get loose, went up and slapped the outside wall. And look and go down through the cars, and no one hit him. Wow. And he came right down on pit road. See it again here. See the green car right in the center of the of the racetrack. There he's already into the wall. This is from the helicopter. So boy, he hit it pretty hard, but was able to get the car down into his pit area, and that's where it remains. Looks like they may be pushing it behind the wall now. So Jeff Green with some early problems at Michigan. Caution is out here as three laps have been completed. Ernie Urban leading his third race of 1998. He also led at Bristol and at the Brickyard 400. There the top 10. We'll be back with more live coverage of the Pepsi 400 presented by DeVilvin right after these messages. Bob, they have actually pushed the car, just number 46 Money Store car, all the way back into the garage area. And uh, Jeff looks like a lot of damage. What happened? Well, I'll, I mean, I come off four there and... Uh, I've been loose there like the first lap, but I thought, thought the air pressure would, would get up and we'd be okay. Been fighting loose ever since we've been here, so I, finally, I guess it finally bit me. Hate it for these guys in the money store where they've been uh, worked their butt off this weekend to try to make this car drive like I wanted it to. And it's not going to happen today. We'll have to wait to Bristol. Right now, the crew going to work. They're going to try and get the car fixed and make repairs that they can make and then send Jeff back out to get a few more laps. Quite a bit of damage there on the right side. The caution came out on lap number four. Just drove right down pit road. It's too bad that the, the damage wasn't minor enough that they could uh, just... Already packing up the pit. Crew Chief Andy Graves has gone to the garage, and we have caution on the racetrack. Every time Steve Burns opens his mouth, someone's gone into the wall. It's Jeff Green this time who finds himself in the wall. Lap 254. Not at all to laugh about Jeff Green, but Steve, every time you're talking... We've had somebody go into the wall, but the gist of what Steve was saying is that Levante, Terry Levante, in the garage with an apparent engine failure. Yeah, Jeff Green hit on the driver's side there. You can see quite a bit of damage to the race car itself. Uh, the one thing that I was noticing as we watch to see that he's okay is that Mark Martin had already taken over second place and was the fit fastest car out there by our computers. Let's go back moments ago. Here's what happened. As you see, he'd already broken free and caught the wall up there. That speedy drive was from where Kenny Schrader had stopped on the racetrack and uh, Rich Bickle earlier as well. And here's that pass for second, buddy. Well, he knows that Mark Martin's really on a move right now, and he could look in his mirror and see that he was closing two, three car lengths every lap. He just moved over and said, teammate, go after him. Those two drivers have such respect for each other. So caution, fourth time today, lap 256. It's our pleasure to be here. Back in a moment. Jeff Gordon continues to lead at New Hampshire International Speedway as he did in July of 1995 to the delight of Ray Evernham and a fact that he repeated in September of 1997, a repeat winner here at New Hampshire International Speedway. Welcome back, everybody. Eli Gold, Buddy Baker, Dick Bergren. Glenn Jarrett, Matt Yoakum, and Steve Burns all on hand here with the TNN Motorsports team. There's Jeff Green's car being pushed onto the rollback. Uh, Jeff is already out of the race car. Steve, uh, one of the earlier reports, we were interrupted because of a car. Ricky Rudd, who's eighth fastest right now, Steve. And Alan, last time we saw Ricky Rudd, he was flat on his back, gasping for air, all burned up. First of all, congratulations, and how do you feel? Well, thanks a lot. I, I feel really pretty good. I'm a little bit tired right now, but uh, I think everybody who ran Martinsville is tired. It was only uh, a couple of days ago. But, uh, you know, we're here at Charlotte, new race. Uh, tested over here a couple of weeks ago, ran real well in the test, and qualified pretty decent tonight. A little disappointed. I, I got the car pushing. It drove good and stuck good in one and two, and I got in a three a little bit too deep, and I got the front end shoving the nose, and it probably cost us a tenth or so. But all in all, pretty happy with it. Good luck, something. Thank you. Jeff Green on the racetrack now was sixth fastest in qualifying at Martinsville a week ago. Down to the checkered flag. And let's see if he's able to crack the uh, top ten. Green, well, not able to crack that top ten. In fact, 24th fastest out of 30 
43 started. 42 oh. runs. We have problems on the back straight away. Down the back number three. Yeah, we'll be in on the back stretch here. Back it up, boys. Hutch Strickland in the 55. Bickle in the 98. Green in the 46. Caution. Second time. That is Kevin LePage in the Prime Star machine. He's coming out. A little Saw fire. You see Kevin moving. Falling on the ground to be sure all the fire's not on him. And caution. A multi-car accident. Chuck Green. 98 Bickle, Green, Hutch Strickland, Johnny Benson was involved. Clearly we saw the page. Here comes Ted Musgrave. Tremendous amount of damage to all these cars. Look at the right front corner of Musgrave's car as he slides into the pit. It looks like that radiator's losing some water too. Jeff Bodine. Oh. He has not, of course, as a former Daytona 500 winner, not had good news of late. Knows now that he won't be in that car next year. Michael Waltrip will be. And he's really got no ride lined up to no. replace this one either. Oh. Michael Waltrip. There's Michael. A lot of damage to the Wood Brothers car. Wood Brothers winning his car owners here at Daytona. They thought they were going to have a great night tonight. Jeff Green, a tremendous amount of damage to the left front corner of his car. Rich Bickle in. And again, there's the Hutt Strickland car. You see the net is down and he's moving around. Look at that tire. That come off the right rear of Michael Waltrip's car. What do you fix there? Everything's torn up so badly. They'll just have to make pieces to make that thing. It's wrapped around the rear end house, and you see them snatching on that rubber there, trying to get it off. Oh, dragging oh. pieces and parts. Yeah. Meanwhile, all the leaders will come in for pit stops. Lap number 33 will be pit stops for all the leaders. First to Glenn Jarrett. And Rusty Wallace brings his car in. Guys, he has done a great job so far. Been glued right to Dale Earnhardt's bumper since the race began. Running in second place. He reports the car is just a little bit loose. So in this four-tire change, you're going to make an air pressure adjustment. Try to tighten him up just a little bit. Here's Mike. Dale Earnhardt has said virtually nothing during the first part of this race. Four tires and fuel. That's it for the leader, Dale Earnhardt. All of these stops under caution, lap 33. It looked like Rusty Wallace may have won the war on pit stops there. He leads Dale Earnhardt off pit road. That's the same car Rusty Wallace had last week at Talladega. They repaired it, and it is running with the lead right now under caution here at Daytona. Glenn, good work by that Robin Pemberton crew. Boy, just as you said that, Eli, Robin looked at me and had a big smile and winked at me. I mean, they beat Dale Earnhardt out by maybe two and a half, three seconds. That might have been one of the best pit stops I've ever seen these guys do, and they have done some great ones. Came at a great time, got Rusty out in the lead. Tell you, he's got a fast race car. When we come back to the World Center of Racing, we'll take a look at all that's gone on. Michael Waltrip's going to have to come back in again. You saw the Big 21 up on the black flag board. Now there is what remains of the Prime Star machine, the Ford Taurus of Kevin LePage. Michael Waltrip is on the initial receiving end of the first hit. Let's take you back and show you exactly what happened off the corner moments ago on the back stretch. Let's all get involved. You see Kevin LePage there getting to, into the outside wall. Michael Waltrip gets caught, spins around. Everybody coming goes low. Some of them go high, and you can see Ted Musgraves there getting involved. Jeremy Mayfield just made it through. So did the four of Bobby Hamilton. Low was the way to get out of that, but there's no way to tell ahead of time. It is so hard to see when these big wrecks get going. Another view Looking from turn three back towards turn two. And you can see visibility down. You cannot see a thing when you go through yeah. with all the tire smoke and, and the car spinning round and round. How would you know where to go? Look at Bill Elliott back there. You saw the golden arches. He just woed it on down. 
Experience will do that for you. Picked yeah. the right lane, went down low, and just took it easy and managed to get through there without a nick on his race car. Oh, boy. Oh, oh. But again, Kevin LePage's car you saw alone on the low side of the racetrack. Break loose. Cliff Michael Waltrip and uh, the wreck was on. Jeff Bodine there in the seven. He really tried to go low and that got him involved. So there wasn't yeah. any. Look set at Dallenbeck. Dallenbeck just got through that mess too. I wonder. I don't know how he saw his way through. Well, let's take a look. We're right we got yeah. the camera. This is what you can see in a major speedway wreck. Nothing. You see right there. What would you do? Listen. He hit it. Jeff barely touched the outside wall and he was lucky nobody was there. Oh, look at what's left of LePage's car. Again, this is a replay of earlier, Kevin. LePage after the accident. And on to the infield care center where we'll have an update for you shortly. Under caution for the second time tonight. The first caution was at lap 13 for a little rain shower. Now a multi-car accident at lap 32.